Hello, my name is Anatoly Modkin and uh, I'm president of Strategist. And today we're going to discuss the role of the academy in the development of the IT industry. First, let me introduce our distinguished guests. Elvin Aliyev, director of uh, e-training department of Baku Higher Oil School, Azerbaijan. Andriy Glubovets, dean of the faculty of computer science at the National University of Kiev Mahila Academy in Ukraine. Maxim Khomekov, Dean of the School of Arts and Sciences at the University of Central Asia, Kyrgyzstan, and Kaha Shengelia, President of Caucasus University in Georgia. The IT companies in Eurasia have switched to large-scale training in short-term courses, and the new specialists are trained in a matter of months. What is the role of traditional higher technical education today? What specialties are most in demand by the industry, and who should pay for those trainings? So the first question I would like to address to you, Mr. Aliyev, to what extent does a traditional educational, uh, educational technical program meets the needs of today's IT industry? Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, tell about IT industry. As you know, IT industry is covering everything in our days, uh, mostly for the studying education. It's uh, one of the important points. As you know, uh, because of the pandemic period, uh, most of the uh, education site, uh, also schools, high schools, uh, as we, we have to, uh, our lessons and exams have to be made online. So uh, that's why I think today, it's a, one of the uh, most important things in the world, the IT side, because as you know, uh, in Azerbaijan, uh, we closed all university, all schools, and uh, that's why we are using such kind of tools, Microsoft tools, uh, Zoom platform, uh, Moodle platform, and that's why uh, I think it's a more important, it's, a most, it's, a, it's so important for today. Uh, what what do you think? I have to talk about online education or uh, in traditional uh, IT in our school? The question was basically uh, a, about the uh, traditional educational of uh, technical uh, sciences and uh, fundamental studies in the universities. Yeah, also in traditional uh, education, it's uh, really so important for today because uh, let's talk, talk about in our uh, Paco Higher Old School. Actually, uh, we have uh, more than uh, thousand students in our university. So we have uh, our IT rooms, we have our uh, technical rooms, we have a uh, server in our uh, two buildings. So we're providing our uh, students with uh, laptops, with uh, computers. Uh, we are providing smart boards. Uh, and we are providing email systems. And uh, today it's, uh, it's really so important uh, because uh, as you know, it's a more important in today's life, the communication. So, uh, and first of all, I want to uh, give uh, examples about the mail. Uh, we are providing information to our uh, students uh, with a mail and also in our schools. Uh, some educations, uh, we are using our smart boards, we are technical sites, such as uh, smart boards, laptops, computers, uh, such, uh, such kind of things. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. And uh, the, the same question, I would be happy to uh, address you, Mr. Glibovets. Uh, as uh, according to your experience with the, also as I understand you have special program in collaboration with EPAM systems in the Cape Mahila Academy. So please share your experience and uh, your vision. Uh, uh, if we are talking about uh, my faculty, uh, we are constantly in dialogue with IT companies. Uh, my uh, point of view is that uh, they should now help universities as much as possible uh, because the uh, you know, situation is critical and in Ukraine the majority of universities are state-owned and the salary of teachers and university employers 
is minimal. If, as I hope you know that the uh, average salary at university will be something like $500. And my students, uh, the second year, uh, his first job salary will be uh, more. It will be something like $600 or $800. And uh, accordingly, many teachers live in uh, our university. Uh, there are a lot of teachers are 60 years old. They're very often the biggest asset of my faculty, of my university. They can give the fundamental fundamentality, uh, but unfortunately, unfortunately, they are not immortal. And what will happen? What will happen when they leave? Uh, that's why we are start working with our partners. And as you mentioned, uh, we have uh, joint programs with a lot of IT companies from Ukraine. Uh, one of the biggest uh, is IPAM. Uh, together with IPAM, we open a dual master program degree where some of courses are taught at, at university and most of them at IPAM. Uh, and I should personally thank Yuri Antoniuk because he understands the need of help universities get closer to them and strategically implement a uh, corporation because before it the position of IT companies was to prepare, uh, to open their own education centers it was something like universities should live uh, in uh, their own life and uh, IT firms will prepare uh, will study graduate students uh, in uh, uh, they are they are uh, and now we are trying to find some uh, ways for corporations and we combine uh, fundamental uh, fundamentality and practice. Uh, also this year we have the first release of this master program. And as for me, it was a great experience because it was senior students. Senior students came, came to this uh, dual education pro master program and they know exactly what they wanted from a master's degree. That's why it was interesting for teachers to work because students is interested in studying and that's why lecturer want to prepare a much more uh, useful materials for the students and uh, IPAM spent a lot of resources to create impressive and extraordinary relevant content it was a content for big data uh, it was a content for business analytics and it was real uh, real impressive content. Uh, they have a special team with Oksana Sitnikov. It's a lot of uh, uh, resources was used for preparing these uh, educational materials. We also uh, trying to get IT firms uh, interested in participating in joint research project because uh, the place of your Ukrainian universities is to prepare students for work in IT, in IT but I try to put attention that universities it's a place for researchers. And together with the PAM, we began joint work on term papers and theses of students. Uh, IPAM uh, specialists have selected uh, 10 topics, and uh, now we are actively helping in students' research. Each student has two uh, mentors, one from the university and other from our partner from business. And it's a very good uh, cooperation. I hope it, uh, our thesis will be uh, as much as scientific as uh, uh, business and uh, business cases will be solved uh, during this uh, thesis. Uh, also, we are working with uh, other firms, not only with IPAM, uh, with Global Logic, with Logic. Uh, embedded systems engineering certification program. Certification program is set of uh, something like five uh, uh, interrelated disciplines. Uh, sometimes in other universities it's called minor. Uh, our courses, our teaching materials are developed jointly with, by faculty teacher and partner specialists. We are start working uh, for something like in this uh, period, a year, uh, year before it and uh, uh, materials were was prepared on a good quality because it was university teachers and specialists. But also it is, it is important that we have uh, achieved an understanding that it's necessary to support the teachers. And Global Logic pays extra salary for faculty members who take part in this program. Also we have uh, courses with, with our partners, but it's small cooperation. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. And the next question I would like to ask you, Mr. Khomikov, uh, from your perspective, what are the challenges uh, for traditional higher education uh, today uh, to meet the context of the rapidly developing uh, IT industries? Um, thank you very much for the question and thank you very much for inviting me here. Um, 
Well, talking about uh, higher education and about the universities, it is kind of increasingly, um, the universities are increasingly uh, considered as kind of um, corporations which are producing graduates. So the main product of the university is a graduate and graduate is understood basically as certain set of the hard and soft skills. So the universities are corporations which actually produce skills in the graduates. If this is, I mean, basically this kind of concept of the hard skills especially is very much um, corresp um, corresponding to actually the old traditional uh, university system which was, you know, in our part of the world and post Soviet countries, uh, which has been created in 1930s, you know, with the kind of need for mass education for, you know, uh, industrialization, you know, to provide big factories, you know, with, with lots of, you know, uh, quality specialists who are very narrowly defined, you know, according to their skills. And this education has been built as a kind of single way from point A to point B, from the entrance to the graduation, you know, you go through these kind of tube which provide you, you know, which kind of make you as a factory, you know, make your, uh, your certain, uh, provide you with certain qualities. Uh, well, of course, this kind of vision of higher education does not correspond, you know, to what we have now. I mean, the, uh, the innovation, we, you know, knowledge society, industry, you know, 4.0, whatever you call this, uh, this world, this, um, this is very fast changing society, very fast changing and changing industry, very fastly changing worlds. So uh, the universities, you know, these kind of traditional universities, they just would not be, you know, fast enough to catch up with all these societal and industrial and technological changes. I mean, we cannot do, I mean, our kind of timeline in the universities is much longer than the life of, of technology. Technologies are changing must, uh, you know, uh, on, on much uh, faster speed. Uh, now to, I mean, there are different models of, you know, non-traditional or, you know, kind of new system of education, which, uh, uh, you know, adapting uh, this system to these uh, to these technological changes. We can talk about you know liberal arts education, for example, which is wide education. We can talk about uh, multiple majors, you know, uh, two, three, you know, up to three majors. I know, you know, in the in the world there are such such programs. We can talk about uh, you know my major minor scheme, and this is you know on the top of this Bolognian uh, kind of bachelor, you know, master PhD uh, PhD. Uh, you know, uh, uh, structure. Uh, the point of this new system of education is to provide the graduate with the capacity to learn. So basically, we it's not providing high, high, you know, hard kind of skills. It is about providing them with uh, development of the mind with the you know uh, capacity to learn in the future so the uh, concept of triple l so called you know lifelong learning is actually also in this in this new vision new vision of higher education in this respect i would say that social sciences humanities you know soft kind of skills are getting more and more prominence and are more and more important because they are, you know, uh, uh, teaching, uh, you know, humanities are teaching us how to learn, how to learn in the future. And the rest will be done, you know, on the, on the, 
uh, on the work, on the workplace, you know, in the corporation, in the company, you know, the whole life, during the whole life, the, the future graduates should, should learn. So basically, I think that the future of education is in more kind of humanistic approach to the education and less in the technological, uh, you know, kind of hard technological, uh, hard technological, uh, you know, skills in a way this is kind of returning from the industrialized education of 20th century to you know more kind of humanistic uh, humanistic understanding of education as enlightenment and uh, civilizing process of the of the of the people you know as it used to be in 18 and or 19th century you know kind of humboldtian kind of vision vision of education so this is basically yeah, I'm a philosopher, so I'm just uh, trying to uh, to do it in a more kind of general way. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Khamikov. And the next question I would uh, like to address you, uh, Mr. Shigelia. So, <clears throat> actually, the same. Uh, uh, the the IT industry in Georgia is just in the very cradle. We have some you know groups that work for banking sector or gambling sector but it didn't look like a proper industry. So actually, what is your mission as an academic? You are one of the leading uh, private universities in Georgia, uh, one of the most successful, and they, uh, we know that your graduates easily find a job. But uh, what kind of job do they find in Georgia or, a, or, a, a, or, or out of Georgia? And what is your mission as an academic uh, institution in Georgia? A, you are on mute. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anatoly, and thank you very much, gentlemen, for, for having me here in this great panel. Um, I have a very, very, um, let's put it this way, uh, not common answers in any questions, Anatoly. Let me put this question back to you as a knowledgeable person in Georgian uh, IT industry. I think we have to get what you guys need from us so we can start to search for solution of those problems. For instance, I got um, uh, from Belarusian companies like a month ago, a, a request to find a 500 uh, IT specialists in the next two, three years. I said, okay, let's sit down and let's work on this and let's find a solution because I cannot alone, I cannot do it. I need your help. I need what you need. I need how, how many you need. I need how much you can invest on this and what we can be a part partners. Without partnership, it's impossible. I mean, we, we don't want to we don't want to solve this problem just like government wants to say it no i mean my my uh, my end of day is how successful my students will be how successful i will find the job right away how successful i will find job even in third or fourth year not waiting for uh, and before graduation because this industry is very very sensible you cannot wait for five or four years and after start to find the job i mean we get we get these people out of the market right away uh, because it's not only a fundamental knowledge, but we have to be uh, very flexible to industry because industry is our main uh, contributor as well. So let's put it this way. This, uh, this, uh, let's put it this way. So what you guys need, we are ready to help you. But we need the uh, back and forth. We need them to sit down and work very closely and help us to get these people out to market. So this is my answer. So with, with what we are doing right now is this way. We want to have a, uh, as much as we can, but as good as we can. And to provide to, to uh, not only Georgia market, now students, my students are working now almost every continent. So it just, it's, it's just, we're just flying. Because what we are doing is not like in the books or not like a 20 or 10 or five or even one year old books. We're not using anymore one year old book. Be using what actually what's supposed to be you guys are doing in an industry. This is my answer. Thank you. Uh, thank you for this. And I, I would like to address a uh, next uh, question to uh, Mr. Uh, Alif. We're, uh, we're now talking to Mr. Uh, Shangeria and, uh, and uh, I, now we're talking to you as a neighboring country. And uh, do you think that there is some uh, regional uh, programs that should be developed uh, and it would ease on the uh, country as a standalone development. 
And also, um, we have uh, best practices, and the idea is to actually to share the best practices. And in this Eurasian region, the best practices are actually Ukraine and Belarus. Because then we have the synergy between the industry, what you were expecting to, uh, to, to have, and actually the, uh, the, the, the IT industry and, and the universities. And uh, again, sometimes in Ukraine, th these are private universities or mostly I agree uh, that they're state-owned universities. In Belarus, it's only state-owned <laughs> universities as we know. But still, these are success stories. And if uh, the, in, in case of Kiel Maila Academy, it's we're talking about, uh, about the master degree. In Belarus, we already are talking about bachelor degree. So when these programs are tailored together with, um, with the companies, uh, and also are being developed on the regional scale, maybe it could be uh, the, the, the uh, outcome could be much more successful. So what's your, uh, uh, from your perspective, what do you think about this, uh, Mr. Alif, uh, the, the microphone is yours. Uh, actually, uh, I think it's a main problem, for example, in our comp uh, country, uh, you know, people don't have big experience in IT, you know, and, uh, you know, it's a main problem, what I think is uh, uh, after getting big experience, people prefer to go abroad. Such kind of European country, most of Germany, you know, uh, most of our uh, network system and uh, soft developers, net, net admins, uh, sys admins prefer to go to Germany because to get a good job, good salary. And I think it's a main problem in our country. And, you know, uh, I think it's a government should to take these people in our country uh, to teach students, you know, uh, because, okay, for example, me, I got some experience, I worked some projects, but I have to share this experience to the students. Uh, after uh, leaving my country, I am going to another country, I will live here, okay, I will, good, I will get good salary, but new students, uh, have to uh, get this experience by their self. But if I stay here, uh, share my knowledge, you will get it. I think it's a main problem. Because of course, okay, we have Google, we have, we can to Google some things to get some information, that's okay. But you know, uh, it's a talking by face to face, it's another thing uh, to talking with the experienced people uh, to get to understand their experience, to get their uh, mindset, to understand their minds, it's uh, another thing. That's why I think it's a main problem in our country, uh, living experience of people, our country. To, uh, they prefer to go most of the Germany. <laughs> I think it's a main problem in our country. I see, but as a short follow-up question, um, actually the idea was the people are leaving the country and the issue that we call the brain drain uh, from uh, the local countries is sometimes a, a result of uh, lack of international companies being able to hire people in place. That's actually what we are now currently developing in Georgia is attracting international companies to train people, but also to hire them without leaving Georgia. I think the same should, could be uh, also uh, and should be developed uh, uh, in or implemented in Azerbaijan. But also I think that I, my initial question was about collaborating and sharing the experience or taking the experience, the studying the experience of Belarusian and Ukrainian universities on how do they, how did they attract international companies to build the curriculum together? How did they attract, what was the incentive for international companies to work together with them? Because you understand that afterwards, the companies they actually hire the graduates. And yeah. it, 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 on the contrary, uh, what, to what you are describing right now, it prevents the brain drain from Azerbaijan, Georgia, I don't know, uh, Central Asian countries. So uh, do you think it, it's a good idea maybe to hold a separate discussion? Maybe uh, it, it's just a better open and closed discussion, but with people like uh, with the, uh, Mr. Hlibovets from the Kiev Mogila Academy, with his colleagues from Belarus, and with your colleagues from the region, at least Caucasus region, uh, Azerbaijan, uh, Georgia, uh, to, to see if uh, there is some experience that we could just save your time in developing a, your curriculum, and maybe sometimes it's about years and not months. So it's, it, do you think is it a good idea or not a good idea? Because, you know, on the go, I'm trying to think how we could be of help to develop the digital economy for the whole Eurasian region. Uh, actually, we have experience in uh, 
how to say, uh, letting companies to invite our students their work uh, their work areas. As you know, we are oil uh, country, and uh, mostly uh, some of our students are studying in oil side. Uh, some, let's say, companies mostly I don't know. Let's say Petkim, Sokar. Uh, they are inviting our students to Turkey and also in soccer. Uh, they are getting really good experience. But you know, I can't say in same thing in IT side. I can't say it. Because be honest, be honest. Um, we are not so good in IT. We have, uh, I can say, really big issues in that. Because uh, I am trying to compare with the uh, oil side and IT. Uh, students from our oil side, they have good opportunity to go so car, pet gym, to see how our, uh, let's say, mechanical equipment works. It's really good experience, but unfortunately, I can't say it in IT side. Mostly we are learning from Google, be honest. I see. Thank of course, you. we have uh, some uh, teachers, they are, try they are good in, but not enough good teachers, you know. Uh, mostly our uh, oil camp, uh, back higher old school, we are trying to invite experienced teachers, also not so teachers, experienced people from the work side to understand their mindset, to under just to understand their mindset. But uh, they are not so, it's so enough. They are not so enough. I see, but look, I, I think that I'm optimistic and I, I'm sure that they, jointly with your Ministry of Economy, will develop, develop some program that maybe will surprise some of you. Uh, so I, hopefully it, the, the situation will change in Azerbaijan as well. Uh, and, uh, sure, think, but I, I don't think it's a not so... Let's be honest, it's not just problem of Azerbaijan. I think uh, there, this problem is uh, so many countries because yeah. let's be honest, most, most of people trying to go Europe, most experienced people, they prefer to uh, uh, big salary, big job opportunity, not so uh, big part of people trying to stay in their, their country and uh, trying to get share their experience. Most of them are trying to leave country. I think it's a main point we understand and uh, to do something, to, not to stop, we can't stop it. We can't stop it because um, most of them will try, try to leave country to get uh, good for the good salary, to get for the good job. But we have to, we can't to limit it. You know, we have to do something to limit it. I don't know, of course we have also to invite some uh, people from international companies to give our experience. But I don't think it's the same things. A local people can hard say uh, to talk face to face. Another thing I think. Uh, that's why. Uh, what uh, let's summarize what I want to say. I uh, I think uh, organization uh, government have to limit to living experience of people to going abroad, limiting, not stopping, simple limiting it to share their uh, experience. Thank you, thank you for your uh, view. And uh, Mr. Shengele, I see that you had some uh, short remark as a follow-up, please uh, turn on the mic. Microphone. Yes, thanks, thanks Anatoly. I want to just to add something to uh, what Elvin was saying. Um, and your question was about cooperation between Azerbaijan and Georgia and making like kind of hub here, and not only in education, also in a, in a, in a industry related. I think um, uh, what, we can, uh, what I can say from my point of view, we have one of his um, closest relationship now with Azeri partners, especially uh, personal, my opinion is we have a, one of his closest partnership with uh, Azerbaijan Oil and Technology uh, uh, University which is based in Baku, and we are having a double degree program and dual degree program right now, but not in IT, uh, not, not in IT. We do have in business um, as a whole, but not yet IT, but it, it will come in IT as well. And, um, and uh, uh, I, I guess uh, education is far uh, behind what Azeri and Georgian partners are doing in terms of 
some other fields like uh, oil or uh, economical issues or trade or, 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 or um, energy or whatever, you name it. But again, I agree, so we need them more, not only me and my university, but whole system of Georgia's and Azerbaijan system to come to closer because we are a big region right now. We can imagine only Azerbaijan and Georgia is around uh, 12 million people. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hub. It can be a huge uh, market for, for any uh, European or American industries like IT or, or, or uh, any other. Anyways, my point is we should use this opportunity to create a hub between a uh, hub in Georgia and Azerbaijan to attract more big companies to work here in this region and uh, and uh, and uh, and also it's going to be good for our economies as well as good our for our people and governments so this is just very quick um, uh, remark about elvin's uh, answer thank you so much and uh, let me address the next question to you mr klibovets uh, you, you mentioned that your uh, lectures uh, are uh, not i mean less paid rather than your graduates uh, let's call it this way and and they to have to train and to mentor proper um uh, students who could be obtained by the uh, by the it industry you need uh, people at level of team leaders in the industry so should they should either do it for free or you should find some funding uh, to pay them to to pay them uh, to uh, for uh, their work so how this high level it uh, education in the universities should be funded by the students themselves by the it industry by the companies what is the right model from your perspective oh, okay it's a very hard um, question as for me <laughs> thank you for this such complex <laughs> Uh, uh, as for me, it's a process that can be uh, developed in one way. Because uh, from the uh, first uh, part of your question, students should pay for the study. Because when uh, they are paying money, they want uh, a good quality of courses and they start studying much more better than if country paid for them. Uh, and in this case, we have uh, private universities, uh, quite good private universities, and they have uh, uh, students pay something like uh, oh, three uh, three thousand of dollars per year. And for Ukraine, it's quite uh, a lot uh, amount. But uh, this university has uh, partners, IT partners, that provided grants for students. And my university work in this area too. We have a lot of opportunities for students uh, to achieve uh, some uh, money for studying. And uh, this money can be spent by students not only for paying to university, but just to study in university, not trying to find some work somewhere other and stop, stop studying. But uh, just for four years, only study in university. Also, we are trying to find uh, some uh, cooperation programs with partners. You know, in Ukraine, we have very good uh, IT industry, very strong IT industry. And uh, it was a long period uh, when they was young. It was one, uh, one way of co co cooperation because they, they want students immediate. They need uh, 10 students that know JavaScript, 15 students that know uh, Spring Boot and something like this. Now they start thinking about future. Uh, they start thinking what will be with market. Uh, they want to prepare students for the whole market, not only for the global logic or, or IPAM. They trying to prepare for the whole market specialists uh, because they have a problem. If specialists, it's not enough specialists in this area, they start uh, providing more salary, more salary, more salary, just to, to leave it in the company. Uh, and in this case, they, they come now we have a partnership in curricular development. Uh, specialists from uh, IT industry, they work on the curriculum of the whole bachelor program. For example, uh, last month we have a 
such uh, Zoom meeting with uh, the main IT uh, industry partners, uh, and we discussed uh, applied mathematics specialization, specialization and what what it should be uh, our students after four after ten years, and what courses should be here. We doesn't have uh, the problem with. Uh, uh, hard skills and uh, soft skills, which uh, uh, Mr. Maxim uh, mentioned, because uh, we have uh, um, uh, something like 140 credits, uh, students should uh, listen to mandatory courses. It's fundamental courses, something like mathematics, something like uh, programming uh, courses, but fundamental programming. And 100 credits, it will be uh, elective courses. And these courses will be something like specialization, and this specialization will be provided with our partners. If this firm is uh, quite good in, uh, for example, uh, mobile development, they will provide courses in mobile. Someone is interested in QA, it will be a, a number of courses that we are develop, developing with this partner. Also, our students uh, elect, no, choose courses from other faculties. They choose from the law faculty, from economic faculty, from humanitarian faculty. In this, in, in this case, if they want to, uh, to work in uh, natural language processing, they should know uh, language, structure of language, rules, uh, not only how to program it. And they can work in uh, interception of areas. Also, with a specialist from other faculties. Uh, I have a programming, basic programming, introduction to programming courses, and it's a lot of physics and a lot of economists uh, that just want to, to know what is this. We have a courses for business process, business model with our partners. And it's a lot of economists in this course because they want to, to be a team lead of IT, IT uh, in IT company. They should know the process, how the software is development. But also they, and uh, most of our uh, teachers for fundamentals disciplines, it's our professors. Uh, but if we are talking about this uh, model of specialization, it's a specialist from the market. It's our partner specialist, it's my graduate, it's my students that have finished my university five, ten years ago, and now they are ready to, to, in, to be involved in university. They want to, to give their knowledge to the students. And in this case, they, uh, they come here not for money. Uh, they come here for some, some maybe fun because it's it's very very interesting to 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 have lectures for the students. They they start uh, uh, questioning you uh, and uh, very interesting questions. That uh, I I think that if you want to study something, prepare a course for students. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you for this. And uh, the next question too, Mr. Khomikov. Uh, your university is a uh, regional university. You, you are active in three countries, uh, in, Kazakh in Kazakhstan, in Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of being a regional university, not country-based university? And the second is actually what kind of uh, support uh, and uh, challenges you have uh, in a regional scale versus the country scale? Uh, this is, um, these are very good questions. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm now trying to um, even to, you know, put something like answer to this question into, the, into an article because I think, well, for the, for the, um, uh, for, for, for a journal in education because, well, on the one hand, I mean, we have these in um, in higher education in general, we have this kind of growth of the regionally, of the regional networks and of the regional universities. Uh, the, um, you know, the uh, higher education is, uh, you know, again, increasingly less depend on, uh, you know, kind of um, nationalist or national agenda. It's more and more, uh, you know, um, it, it, well, first of all, we have this kind of exponential growth, uh, exponential growth of the international students in the world. Now, I think about 
uh, you know, 12 million, right, about 12 million of the students, I mean, before pandemics, of course, who uh, started, who started, uh, who started abroad. And uh, the universities who invite the students, they are, they, they cannot be seen in kind of, um, in the framework of the national agenda. So anyway, you know, global and uh, regional universities is kind of a new normality of the, of the universities. We have the, all these, you know, networks. I can, I can just talk about, you know, well, there, is, there are some, you know, in, in, in uh, South Africa, there is this university, uh, you know, which is, uh, which is more or less kind of regional in um, in uh, in this uh, southern part of Africa. In uh, in Europe, we have this European University Institute, for example, which is which covers all EUI, which covers all uh, European European states. I myself participated in the creation of the network of the BRICS universities, which is Brazil, Russia, India, India, China. It's not regional, but it's kind of you know other uh, you know um, type of the of the university and we have and we have here uh, you know this uh, University of Central Asia which is regional I mean uh, everything all the, the, uh, everything depends on the mission of the university in term when we are talking about EUI for example European University Institute you know the main mission is just to provide um, you know kind of integrity for what is called European educational area. So it's, it's about, you know, European identity. It's about, uh, you know, Europeanness. Uh, that's why, I mean, that's why they have this kind of regional, uh, regional university, uh, European universe. Well, in term, when we are talking about Central Asia, this is very um, diverse region. And uh, you know integration processes uh, in terms of the politics or you know societies are not that developed. So we cannot talk about this region as a politically kind of or economically single region. I mean, well, Kyrgyzstan is oriented more to you know China. Well, uh, Turkmenistan is whatever it is. Uh, then you know Uzbekistan is 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 is, is larger, but uh, you know it's just started opening to the to. The, I mean, so it's it's kind of very different, very different. Uh, the region contains of very different countries, so it's not about integration. This university, this particular university, is the international university, which is uh, which whose primary aim is development and development of, uh, you know, the societies in, and especially mountain societies, because we are active in the mountain regions. Um, mountain societies of uh, these three, three countries. So, you know, we are situated in, uh, in basically in the middle of nowhere. I mean, I'm now sitting in Narin, uh, but we have these prime facilities here uh, built with the uh, with the help of uh, Agahan Development Network and another our you know uh, main uh, main campus is in Koro, which is uh, which is in Pamir region. So, I mean, this is the main aim of the university. The mission of this university is development, development of the societies, development of the economies, development of the local communities if you if you want so you know for this uh, kind of particular uh, aim i think uh, you know the regionality uh, fits uh, quite quite well i mean this is this is kind of a uh, the the you know the benefit of the of the of, of being regional we are not um we are not uh, limited by the political or whatever framework of particular country of Tajikistan or, or Kyrgyzstan. We are international, and in this sense, you know, all our uh, my, more than half of our professors are expats from from, uh, from Australia, UK, the US, uh, you know, you name it, New Zealand, you know. 
I, Iran, etc. Uh, but of course, there are challenges. I mean, uh, uh, one of the challenges is that, uh, unfortunately, in our uh, in our countries, we have very rigid, uh, still very rigid um, higher education system with state standards. You know, um, in in Tajikistan, for example, state accreditation. In Kyrgyzstan, it's not state, it's more or less independent, you know, professional accreditation, but it's still, still there are, you know, standards. And we have to comply because we are not only international students on this, not only international universities in the soil of these countries, but we are also national university because we, if you want to develop the country, you should be recognized as uh, you know, kind of uh, as national university according to the national standards. So we're going through, you know, multiple accreditation, accreditation in Kyrgyzstan, accreditation in Tajikistan, compliance with the Ministry of Education here, with the Ministry of Education there. So this is, of course, you know, the major uh, pain in the neck. And I, I see Andre is, uh, you, know, um, you know, well, impressed by this. Yes, this is, this is, this is what I say would be. This is impressive, but this is this is kind of this is kind of limitations we have, and what we have to do. But this is uh, basically very innovative university in the way, uh, in the vision, in the mission, and it's uh, just fun to be there. Thank, Thank you for this, and I would address the next question uh, to you, uh, Kaha. Uh, it's true that uh, uh, most of you are uh, running uh, private universities and that's uh, not state-owned universities. With that, still, it's, uh, um, uh, there is some synergy between what happens in the state uh, universities and the private universities. So, uh, uh, although it might uh, uh, you know, seem like a, a, a counterproductive or a, something that should a, or may create a competition to the private universities, but do you think that the governments in Eurasian region should invest in state-owned universities to uh, rebuild the state system of technical education according to the new realities? No, I don't think so. Um, I think the government has to go vice versa. I think um, we have to support to uh, flourish private schools. And don't forget, best schools in the world are private, from Harvard to MIT. And I don't think so. MIT is better than any Belarusian or Ukrainian or Georgian or Azerbaijan universities. This is a, a very simple answer. We can discuss, we can debate, but this is my uh, opinion. I have spent like 12 years in the US. I know how US system is working perfectly fine. Best universities, best schools in the world. Even any, cannot even name it one school in, in Eurasia or Europe to be best than US private schools. So that, why we are you know, uh, in, um, inventing new tools or new uh, biker when we have it already in place and it's worked perfectly fine, it's number one schools. So this is my, my point is governments in Eurasia have to help at least not uh, making problems for private schools to flourish them. And I think it's going to be an excellent tool to compare and competition between private and public schools in this region. Thank you, Kaha. And uh, to you, Mr. Alif, I, what's your perspective on this? I absolutely agree with Kaha because, you know, I think uh, private schools, no matter high school and school, they have to... Uh, I think public schools is a new idea because uh, most of the state universities, they are going same as a way. It is it is difficult for them to forget old knowledge, old mindset. But I think it's a uh, public schools, as I said, no matter high school or I don't know, uh, uh, not high school, we have to focus on it. We have to focus on uh, public schools, as I said, Kaha. And that's why I'm absolutely agree with Mr. Thank you for this. And uh, back to uh, Mr. Libovets. Uh, first, uh, in short, if you, yes, Kaha, you, you wanted to. I want to add something. We have now one of the fine examples of, uh, of private schools here. One is Mohila Academy, which is one of the best schools in Ukraine. 
and one is the uh, University of Central Asia in Kyrgyzstan, which is also one of its best schools. And not only in Kyrgyzstan, I can say in whole whole region. So I mean, why we are inviting new tools or wheels when you have already in place? And let let them to, to help. I mean, I, I'm always saying to my government, you cannot divide, you cannot say only only state schools. We are also a, a, owned by this country. Um, so what if you are private? Uh, we, are, we are not making money on this. We are investing money in this. So, uh, and this is a, um, a just my, my, my addition to, this, your, to your question. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Lilovets, uh, I again, uh, in short, your perspective on the, on the last question. And, uh, and the, uh, another is just to put it together. Um, what should be the role of international financial institutions like the World Bank, BRD, and the global development agencies like USAID, CID, and others in developing the, uh, a private academy in the Eurasian region uh, from your perspective? Thank you. If you're talking about government in Ukraine, uh, the, uh, I have laughing when Mr. Maxim said about accreditation because we have, now I, I'm in the process of accreditation of my bachelor program and it's a lot of regulation in this area. We have a lot of regulation. I'm state university. I have a lot of regulation in this area and it's very hard to change my programs because I should process it and it's quite a lot. And uh, if we are talking about a partnership with industry, they can't imagine that if we are planning something, we will uh, start it next year <laughs> and, or maybe in a few years. <laughs> and the, why? We need it right now. And in this case, we're starting thinking about some opportunity, uh, some proposition. If we are talking about uh, international uh, organization, I think that uh, from my point of view, there should be some programs for the, um, that will support teachers who create quality courses and teach it at university. We already talked about this pro problem and uh, Mr. Alvin say about it. We should leave people in university, uh, give, give them uh, ability to grow, but st stay in this area, in this country, in this university. Also, we should found uh, some, uh, um, some programs for the development of curriculum and materials and they are scanning to other universities. Now we are thinking about uh, this uh, in Ukraine. We are start uh, developing curricula with our partners, and we say, okay, it's not for our university. We will prepare a good curricula, and you should use it in other regional universities that are not uh, so high uh, as my faculty. Also, uh, programs to promote exchange of teachers and students. We have a lot of programs for the students, but not so much for teachers. For, uh, for, uh, for exchange of lecturers, for professors. And according to the COVID, uh, now we have a great opportunity. I have lecturers from the USA, from Europe. They, they can just uh, connect to my students and provide lecture. I hope after it, everything will finish, we will not uh, back to the traditional system. Now we are working on the, uh, something like blended learning where some activities will be online uh, and some activities will be offline. Also, uh, we should promote a joint research work of students, not in, in one university, but uh, students uh, that will work on research uh, during uh, a lot of universities. And it can uh, provide uh, some uh, research uh, uh, topics for the professors. Because when we have a joint uh, student program, we will have some interest. Of, we have a uh, master degree uh, with uh, TUC, Technical University of Kosice. And uh, students will receive two, two diplomas, one from TUC and one, one from our university. It's master degree diploma. And we will exchange students from the second year of studying from TUC will come to Ukraine and Ukrainian students will go there. But master thesis will be with professors from both universities. And it's a very good idea for, for finding some research uh, ideas. Okay, that's, that's for me, it's quite enough. Thank, thank you so much. And uh, to Mr. Khamekov, uh, in short, uh, uh, please, uh, I know that you have also interesting experience as a follow-up to COVID-19 pandemic in your region and uh, what actually your institution had to be, uh, to, which transformation should pass through. 
uh, and according to adjust itself to the new environment? Well, basically, this is, I mean, uh, what, what everybody had to, had to do, just, you know, in one day, switch to the distant learning and remote, uh, remote education. Uh, we are, I mean, one of our uh, peculiarities is that we are, you know, our students are from rural areas and they don't have, uh, many of them are from Areas. They don't have uh, good internet connections in some areas in Pamir. They even have, you know, problems with electricity and things like that. But we are, you know, the our campuses are residential campuses, so they can they can go here. So we had this, you know, trouble to identify how we can uh, manage, you know, their being here in on campus but at the same time you know provide distant learning you know not to so you know, not to be uh, not to undermine the health and security issues but basically i think that this uh, this covid 19 um well took off you know kind of the limits and you know kind of psychological limits we are now we now know how to do that you know on distant learning and Lots of things actually it's opened up, you know, the whole range of the possibilities like mini degrees from other universities, you know, you can do that online. Like, you know, elective via Coursera or edX or, you know, any other kind of open education platform. Like, um, you know, connecting, you know, the what, what Andre just talked about, this COIL, what is called, you know, col you know kind of uh, collaborative uh, international learning, you know, projects, uh, which is, um, uh, which are, you know, groups of the students working together on, you know, this or that particular, particular topic. But at the same time, I don't think that um, uh, the uh, distant education would somehow substitute for the, uh, you know, for the face-to-face -face education. We also learned uh, the uh, value of the human interactions and value of the university atmosphere when you know you have face-to-face -face teaching and when you have you know kind of seminar so I think that the future for the for the blended uh, uh, with the blended kind of uh, education some things will be done I mean you can get information and you can get knowledge through internet but you cannot get education through internet, you know. It's still, education is you know, something more than that. Uh, they should be, you know, kind of walls of the university and the atmosphere of, of study inside. I think this is also very important and this is what we learned during the pandemic. Thank you very much. Thank you, and just we have one uh, minute uh, left and two, Mr. Aliyev. Uh, to summarize this discussion, what do you think could be the contribution of international financial institutions and the uh, and, uh, international uh, uh, development agencies, uh, agencies to, uh, to develop the uh, digital economy and the IT sector in Azerbaijan? Just in short, in brief. Just in short. Uh, actually, it's a, as I say, it's a big issue. So. Uh, that's why I think organization and companies and uh, education uh, high schools or schools have to, to work together because uh, companies have to hire people uh, after all. That's why they have to work with schools, with the high schools, they, uh, they have to support them and they should understand that uh, high school providing, I'll say, uh, they are doing, they are creating uh, opportunities, they are uh, preparing students for, their, for them. And they have to understand it. I think so. that's why they have to work together, organization, companies and high schools. Thank you so much and thank you to all of you for this fruitful discussion. And I hope that they will have follow up and they will have a new opportunity to meet together. Thank you so much. Thank you.